Welcome to the Lovestead. <coughs> Leave it to me to try to do a cute opening and then choke on my coffee. Also, what is going on with my hair in this clip? I just... Points for trying. Anyway, ignore the hair. I also wanted to give you a little content warning if you have epilepsy or are sensitive to flashing strobing lights. I do have a clip in this vlog of some lightning and you should probably skip over that if you're sensitive to that. I have left a timestamp down below for when that part happens. Back to the chaos. <laughs> Hello, welcome back or to Lady Love Said Reads. My name is Jessica and this is my weekly vlog. <clears throat> Today is Monday, April 3rd and wow, 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 happy April. <laughs> like where's the time going? I know that people say this all the time in life but I really do feel like time is going by fairly quickly but also slowly it's a weird thing isn't it time like right March felt very long to me but the year as a whole is feeling very fast so whoosa let's slow down let's be mindful let's be present let's make the time stretch and last and enjoy life right and um one of the ways we enjoy life is by reading books so let's chat about what I'm currently reading. The big book that I'm working on is Legendborn. This is by Tracy Dion. It is a young adult fantasy, dark academia, and I'm obsessed with it. I'm obsessed with it. I'm loving it so much so far. I mean, it's just a solid read. The characters, the pacing, the plot, it's great. If you like dark academia and young adult fantasy, you would probably really like this. One thing that I'm struggling with that I think is probably just a me issue <laughs> is the magic system. So I'm having some trouble wrapping my head around how these legend born work versus a vassal versus uh, an oath versus a this and a that. Like there's all these different roles within the secret society that Brie is a part of that are, it's like a magical secret society and I'm having trouble like fully grasping what these roles are and how the magic works here. But that could entirely be a me issue and not an issue with the book. I'm on page 173. Um, got some gorgeous tabs going on. It's a fun time. This is the book of, book of the month edition. Next, I will be starting today, Wayward, for my regularly sized book. Um, Wayward by Amelia Hart. So one of my favorite booktubers, Brittany from Books with Brittany, her Patreon is reading this this month. And I'm not a member of her Patreon, but I figured I had it on my shelves. It looks awesome. So I might as well join them with a read here in April. Um, so Wayward is like a fantasy, but it's also kind of a historical feminist novel. So it traces like a family from what I know. And again, I could be wrong. I'm kind of going into this fairly blind, um, because I just sort of got the basics. I don't know about you. Okay, so tell me down below. Do you like to have a good idea of what a story is about or do you just like the general vibe um, before you read it? Because for me, I'm kind of more of a general vibe person because I don't want any spoilers and I don't want any hardly hard formed preconceived notions about what it is I'm about to read because I feel like when I go in with preconceived notions I'm more likely to be disappointed because like I set my expectations and then my expectations aren't met so I find that I enjoy my reading more when I just know like the basic vibe of a book rather than like hard plot points and things like that so the basic vibe that I'm getting from this book is that it's a family history across three different timelines and there's magic involved 
and there's some feminist topics covered. So I'm excited for it. I love this cover. I want my whole life to be this aesthetic. Truly, truly I do. And then on audiobook, I'm reading Velvet Was the Night by Silvia Moreno Garcia, and I have been waiting a long time to read this book. I finally am getting to it. This is a historical novel, historical fiction, and it's set in Mexico, and it's about like the era where Mexico was really scared about communism in the 1970s and like in the 1970s when there were like the student uprisings at colleges and universities like 1968 in the U.S. Um, and like Kent State in the U.S. you know there are similar things like that happening in Mexico at the time with this college groups and student groups that were doing these various uprisings that could get kind of violent. And so it's following multiple perspectives. One is the perspective of Elvis, who is this undercover agent for the government trying to kind of squash any communist uprisings. And then the other one is just your average Susie Q. <laughs> like she is just your average everyday woman um, living in Mexico. Uh, her name is Maytai, Mai Tai. I, I don't remember her name off the top of my head. It's hard for me to remember names when I don't visually see them on the page, but she's pretty cool. I mean, she works in a law firm. She's just living her life. She likes to read romance in her spare time, and she kind of gets caught up in this business because her neighbor asks her to cat sit for her. And then her neighbor goes missing because she's involved in like this communist student group. So then all these agents are like coming to her house and being like, where is Lenora? Um, and she's like, I just, I'm just watching her cat for her. I don't know. I don't know this woman. Why am I suddenly caught up in this plot? And like, it's really fun. I am enjoying it immensely. This was one of my most anticipated reads from a few years ago. So I'm very happy to be able to, to get to it now. And it's just such a great Time. I'm about halfway through that one. p.m. and the sky is looking quite menacing right now. Do you believe we'll get a spot of rain?
I don't know what is up with my accents in this vlog. This vlog is just full on cringe, let's be honest. So it is Thursday, it's 9.30 p.m. Central Time here on Thursday. I just wrapped up teaching class and I made a, an, a lovely little iced coffee because I am planning on staying up a little bit late tonight working on some things. Um, but I wanted to do a quick check-in because I haven't done a reading check-in since Monday. Ultimately, I haven't made a whole lot of progress on the books that I'm reading physically. I am 16 pages into Wayward and I have it with me somewhere in this room. So far I'm loving the vibes of it, but that's all I can say because it's just 16 pages. I have not made any progress in Legendborn, but I did finish Velvet Was the Night. Now, Velvet Was the Night was interesting. It was a fun time. I found it to be really atmospheric, and when I did a little bit of research on it, I learned that this was a book written in the genre called noir, like film noir, and I'm honestly not a huge fan of noir films. Like, The Maltese Falcon, for example, is considered, like, the number one noir film out there or whatever. And I'm not a huge fan of noir films. But I did enjoy this noir book. I didn't love it. Like, I wasn't, like, over the moon about it. But it was a fun time. It was... I don't... I feel weird about it because, like, I liked it, but I didn't like it. <laughs> uh... uh. It's like at the beginning of this vlog when I was like, time moves slow, but it's also fast. Why am I so cringe? I am nothing if not awkward. I blame the autism. So yeah, I kind of have a, a, a love-hate relationship with Velvet is a Night because I love Sylvia Moreno Garcia's writing. She has some good writing, some laugh out loud moments, and just some really good ambiance. Like she does ambiance so very well. And this definitely had a pretty cool like 1970s ambiance to it. Like you could feel the heat of the summer. You could feel like just the electricity in the air kind of thing. I didn't love the characters all that much. I thought that the characters were more just plot devices than they were fleshed out people. The one that was, well, there were two that were actually pretty well fleshed out, Elvis and Maite. And Maite, oh, I wish Sylvia had given Maite a bit of a break because all throughout the book, Maite is just described as like this ugly girl and no one will love her because she's ugly and oh, she's so plain. And then when we're in like the perspectives of Elvis's perspective, he's all like, oh, she's not someone I would ever date. She's awfully too ugly for me to actually date her, but I'm kind of interested in her personality. And I didn't love that. Like, I just, like, cut the woman a break, Sylvia. Uh, <laughs> I just, there was just some messaging in there that I didn't really vibe well with, but it was probably accurate for its time period. I don't know. Yeah, so the characters did feel more like plot devices. The plot was interesting, but not nothing too, like, groundbreaking or anything like that. I do think that um, Sylvia Moreno Garcia was trying to be fairly, like, accurate with the historical time period and accurate in depicting how some of these relationships would go down, how some of these interactions would have gone down, some of the political underpinnings of it all. And that was really interesting and fun to read about and to learn about because I know next to nothing about Mexican history. So I really liked getting that perspective. Um, and the afterword that she writes in this also goes into a little bit more detail about that time period and like some educational pieces on that time period, which I really liked. Um, so overall, um, that being said, this was about a three star read for me because I tend to be a very character driven reader and this one was a little bit heavier on plot, plot devices instead of characters, so just like the two characters that were fleshed out and well developed. I want my cast of characters to feel like real raw people, like Anxious People by Frederick Bachman. Every single one of those characters, every single 
one of them, even the bank teller that's in there for like five minutes feels like a real fleshed out real person. And that's kind of what I crave in my reading. So my rating here is more about me and my tastes and my preferences as most ratings are. Um, so do know that if you're planning on reading this book and um, if you're a very plot driven reader, you might really enjoy this. If you like noir stories, you might really enjoy this. I think that just those are two things that aren't like, like the sweet spot for me, you know? Um, my sweet spot is like, fully fleshed out characters reaching self-actualization which didn't really happen in this story it was just a fun time but an educational time too and all that jazz so those are my thoughts on um, Velvet Was a Night by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. I am glad to have read it and I do think that um, Moreno Garcia is a powerful writer and a very skilled writer and I'll definitely keep reading her work. Next on audiobook, I picked up some sad girl lit fic called Happy Hour by Marlo Granados. And I read about 35% of this today when I was cleaning stalls at the barn. And this isn't so much sad girl lit fic as it is misanthropic lit fic. <laughs> I'm just having the best time reading this. Oh my goodness, I love these characters. Like the two main women, and I don't remember their names right now. Oh, I do remember the one, Issa, because we have a Frisian horse at the barn named Issa. So that'll make it easy for me to remember Issa. And Issa is the protagonist. And so what's going on in this book is she is living in New York City with her roommate. And they're just two women who kind of just bumble around major cities and are socialites. If you've ever seen the TV show Don't Trust the Bee in Apartment 13, is it? I don't remember the exact number, but it's got um, Kristen Ritter in it. Her character is these two girls, or these two women, I should say. They're like in their 20s. They're very young, always depicted. But they just like, bummer, they don't have real jobs. Um, they get these rich, wealthy people to buy them drinks and food, and, and they just bum around at different people's apartments, and they don't have a job and they don't work and they're just like very intellectual and like artistic without trying to be it's just it's so good it's so good I love it so freaking much so far I cannot wait to keep reading this book and I definitely really want to read it with my eyes read a physical copy because there's just so many moments where I'm like I stop scooping the poop at the barn to be like oh my gosh like that is a quote I can't catch a quote in an audiobook. Um, so I want to get a copy and annotate it really, really bad. So that's what I'm reading right now. I'm so into like sad girl lit fic right now. It's just like really hitting the spot for me right now. Um, so if you have recommendations for other sad girl lit fic, leave them down below. Um, other sad girl lit fic that I've read and loved, The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath, Cleopatra and Frankenstein by Frank Coco Malore. Um, my Dark Vanessa, can't remember the author's name off the top of my head, but those are three that I've read and really, really loved. Uh, so yeah, leave your recommendations for other sad girl lit fic down below. I wanted to do a quick book haul with you if I've got time in this. Yeah, we've got time. It's only been a 400 minute clip so far. Uh, so I hauled some sad girl lit fic. <laughs> so, um, okay, let's start with my book of the month selections for April. I did get a book of the month pick and two add-ons and they are all sad girl lit fic. One is a memoir but it kind of has that same vibe. So this was my book of the month pick for April. Advika and the Hollywood Wives by Kirtana Ramasetti. And this is about a woman who lives in Hollywood and gets into all the drama. And I'm here for it. I love those kinds of stories. I also got as an add-on, really good actually, by Monica Heisey. And it's about a woman struggling with depression and you know the dance we all do when we're out in public talking to people and you're like, I'm fine, even though you're not really fine. That's what I know about that one. And then I got My Body by Emily Ratajkowski, which is the collection of essays on body image and eating disorders and um, being objectified, is what I know of that. And I've been wanting to read this for a long 
time, so I just bit the bullet and bought a copy. Then I got a couple other ones. I have actually really been wanting to reread this, The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. I read it a couple years ago and I didn't like it, but I kept thinking about how at the time that I was reading it, I just was not in the, in the right headspace to be able to read and appreciate this. This book is one that you can't rush through. It's one that you really have to take your time with and sort of drink in small sips. And I was trying to really rush through it because I had a huge TBR the month that I had read it. And I really liked certain parts of this, but because it was just taking me so long to get through it, I think I rushed it. And then I ended up not enjoying it. So I want to give it a reread. And when I want to take my time with a book and like really just slowly go through it, I can't check it out from the library because I always have to return it before I'm done with it. So I went ahead and bought a copy of it so that I could give it another shot and just really like soak it in and reread it because I loved The Night Circus. And in general, I tend to really like the ambiance style of writing that she does and she's very character driven right I remember there not being a whole lot of plot in this but it's very character driven and idea driven and I usually really just love that and I think maybe if I just take my time with it um, I'll end up really loving this too earlier this year um, in I think it was February and I didn't do a February wrap-up did I I don't think I did yet. Oh, poo on me. But no, not really. Please don't. <clears throat> I had read in February um, this book, The Ballerinas by Rachel Kapelke Dale. And well, this is shit. This is an advanced reader's copy that someone sold me. You are not supposed to sell advanced reader copies. <sighs> anyway. That's really annoying. Really, really annoying. Well, this is getting returned because I don't want an, an arc. I want the actual freaking book that I paid for. Anyway, this is about dancers who get into a messy situation and it's very dark and it's so much more lit fic than it is thriller. I went into it thinking it was a thriller and it was really, really good. And similar to with Happy Hour that I'm reading now, I really wanted to read this with my eyes because I think it'll be amazing and I'll annotate the heck out of it. And then I bought Kapelke Dale's newest book, The Ingenue. This is not an arc, thank goodness. Um, <laughs> and this one is about a pianist who's like super talented. That's all I know about it. I love the ballerinas enough that I just was like, I'm going to get this. No thoughts in my head, just books. Pippi, are you comfortable? With your back legs all splooted? Is that comfy? Yeah. <laughs> You're such a silly baby. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh stretch. Hello, it's Friday. I'm just getting up, so I look a mess. But um, I wanted to put in a caveat about my book haul because I've posted before about how I'm doing the Broke Bitches book buying ban bingo. <laughs> There's a lot of alliteration there. Um, which is hosted by the Roomies at the Roomies Digest and some other folks on Instagram. Um, and like, if you buy books when you haven't gotten a bingo on that board, then you have to start over. But the caveats for me on that are that if it's book of the month, I'm going to go ahead and get whatever I want to get from book of the month. Because like, life is short, YOLO. Like, this is, this is what enriches my life. I'm not going to completely ban myself from buying books. And then if I have a gift card somewhere, then I can buy stuff. So, like, um, a couple vlogs ago, I posted that I bought a book at Barnes & Noble because I had a gift card. And, like, this recent haul, and I got two more coming, um, they were purchased with gift cards. So, I don't count that against the book buying ban. So... <laughs> Just to make things clear, I am still on track um, with my bingo boards, even though I have hauled some books because they were purchased with gift cards. Hallelujah.
I'm just hoping I have enough battery in my camera to film this clip. How are we doing? All right, I think we're okay, battery-wise. Happy Sunday. I'm gonna go ahead and put my hair in a ponytail because it's warm. Do any of you have to have your hair up when it's warm? Like I haven't turned my air conditioning on yet, but it's like a warm day, so it's hot in here. I don't like hair on my neck in those scenarios. So you're gonna have to just deal with my beautiful arm shots. Wow. We put the hair up. <clears throat> At some point, <laughs> hopefully soon, I'll have the mental bandwidth to actually start doing my hair and makeup again. That point is not right now, though. You know, just keeping it real, I guess. I think it's okay to, like, do booktube without a full, fa full face of makeup. Um... It's like, like, this is my face, you know? And I think I really like to wear makeup and I really like having my hair done as and like my nails done because it's like a form of self-expression that feels true to myself and I just have not had the bandwidth to do it lately. Um, <clears throat> just because there's been a lot going on, there's been a lot that I'm working through mentally. And I think that it's okay to have those moments and to share those moments. And, you know, we're not always going to be like perfectly put together. And I've been thinking about this a lot because today is Easter. So I'm thinking of the theme of like resurrection and like how resurrection is showing up in my life. And it's an interesting thing to think about. So like resurrection or renewal or um, being made new and like resurrection and renewal like it's a really interesting concept to think about like how that is showing up in your life because I think that we're all sort of in a constant state of growth and renewal and you know that's not it's it's not like there's an end point you know there's not like a point where we're going to be like oh I've grown enough as a person I can stop now so like you know if you're a Christian we celebrate resurrection today it's like a very specific holiday right we're not celebrating resurrection in general we're celebrating Jesus but like thinking about resurrection could be a more general way uh, just to like work through the concept if you're not a Christian so like I guess I'm curious to know you know like if you're comfortable sharing this might not be thing a thing you're comfortable sharing but like what how is how is resurrection and renewal showing up in your life? And it doesn't have to be a faith-based thing. It can just be like, what parts of yourself are you reclaiming right now? And what parts are you um, making new? Uh, let's talk about the book that I finished yesterday. So I finished Happy Hour by Marlo Granados. And I loved it. I loved this book. I gave it five stars. Now, this book is not going to be for everybody because there's basically no plot. It's just these young women trying to survive in New York City. They're in the party scene and it's just a very like day by day vibes kind of a book. It's all vibes, no plot as we say in the booktube universe, and I loved it. Like, I thought the characters were well-developed, well-rounded, and interesting, and I identified a lot with certain parts of Issa's character, and I just went through a phase similar to this when I was in my 20s. I mean, I didn't live in New York City, but I did kind of go through that phase where I was just really into the art scene, like a scene-ster, you know? Really into the art scene and the music scene and like interested in meeting interesting people and artistic people and always trying to think about things in a philosophical way and like, um, <clears throat> you know, seeing everything through the lens of art and artistry and creativity and um, that was definitely a phase that I went through in my 20s. So I really identified with a lot of what these two young women were dealing with and what they were thinking about and what they were trying to do with their lives. And 
I definitely want to read this with my eyes. I read it on audiobook, but there were several moments as I was reading where I was just like, oh, that's so good. That's so quotable. So I want to get a copy and annotate it and read it with my eyes. I'm planning a December of rereads, basically. So like there's a handful of books that I've read on audiobook that I would love to get a copy of and annotate and reread in December. So I'm kind of thinking that like that's going to be like my December wrap up is just like a month of just joyfully rereading the books that I've loved throughout the year. But we'll see. We'll see. December's a long ways off yet. We'll see if that actually like comes to fruition. But um, I gave Happy Hour five stars and I loved it. I loved it. I'm really just absolutely devouring books right now with the theme of like women versus the void or like sad girl lit fic. Like it's just really it's just really satisfying me right now. I'm, I'm loving it, devouring it. Want more, 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 more. Anyway, the next book that I picked up on audio is The Empress of Salt and Fortune by Nevo. I don't know what this is about. I just know that it comes highly recommended. And it was a short little audiobook to pick up. They'll easily be able to read it cover to cover today when I'm doing barn chores. I'll let you know what it's about then. <laughs> Hello, it is Monday. I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this vlog. Please ignore the visage. I did barn chores today. It was 80 degrees and then I worked out. So the sweat equity was real this afternoon and I, you know, I look how I look. Reading update. I finished The Daughter of Salt and Fortune. No, The Empress of Salt and Fortune by Nevo. And I gave it three stars. This book is really allegorical, I think. I think that everybody has a different interpretation of this book because it is kind of difficult to really grasp what's going on. But my interpretation of it is that this historian is curating different objects and documents of an estate of like a royal family. And the rabbit woman is not a real person, but is more of a symbolic representation of the story that the documents are telling. That is, that's how I interpreted it. And I give it three stars. I don't think I'll continue with this series. Uh, it's very like folktale-esque. It's very fairy tale esque um, There isn't anything particularly wrong with it that I can really, you know, nitpick but it just wasn't for me. So um, I will, like I said, not be continuing the series and it was a three star read. And that kind of wraps up the vlog. So I did not finish Wayward. I'm about halfway through and I really like the vibes so far. Really not a whole lot has happened. It's just vibes right now. So if you like that kind of thing, check it out. I did not finish Legendborn. I'm about a third of the way through on this and this is a pretty standard like adventurous YA fantasy with a little bit of romance in there and I like it. I like it a lot. It's fun. It's not blowing me away but I'm enjoying it. Like I'm enjoying the ride and that'll that will just that will just do it for this week's vlog so let me know down below if you've read any of the books that i talked about this week um just to recap we talked about wayward legend born we talked about uh, velvet was the night by sylvia moreno garcia we talked about uh happy hour by marlo granados and the empress of salt and fortune by nevo read any of them let me know down below we can chat if you just want to leave me an emoji to let me know that you're here leave me a leave me some sort of insect emoji for wayward and until next time make sure that you continue to read good books drink a coffee take care of yourselves and each other 
Bye.